Coming at the age of 90, uh, we're taking a live look inside Senator Feinstein's office this morning where we understand that uh, staff is yeah. meeting, discussing uh, the, the events, the plans, uh, and what happens next. And um, that is a big, important part of this story. Yeah, we'll be talking about it all morning. The death of Senator Feinstein marks the end of a long and storied political career. It spanned more than 50 years. Yeah, we're now joined by UC College of Law professor David Levine to discuss Feinstein's life and career. I think the first thing, Professor, thank you for joining us yeah. uh, so sure, quickly this morning. I think the first thing on everyone's mind is what happens next. Well, let's at least pause and, and think about what a remarkable career uh, Senator Feinstein had and uh, thank her for her service to California and the nation uh, because it really is Greg's package shows. It's really, really a remarkable, remarkable story. And, uh, you know, she just pause on that as well. I mean, I'm happy to go forward, well, but the, uh, she was you... remarkable. Uh, absolutely, and and that moment yeah. when uh, in the mayor when she was mayor of San Francisco certainly uh, just a pivotal moment in her career. Um, if if you want to start with that first, the impact that she's had on San Francisco, California, and the nation. Sure, Pam. Uh, right. I mean, I guess the first time she came to the attention of the nation, certainly for me, uh, was in 1978 when she was the one who had to break the news to the world that Harvey Milk and Mayor Moscone had died uh, in that shocking case in uh, in San Francisco in the San Francisco City Hall, where she actually was there, and she then stepped up as mayor. I mean, I think she had been. Uh, you know, considered a decent supervisor uh, at that point, and she really, really stepped up as the leader at that point and guided the city through a very, very difficult time. Uh, and and I think did you know did an excellent job uh, through that. She was a, she tried to run for governor uh, and failed. That's really the only thing that she ever failed at in terms of running for office. And then she joined the Senate in 1992, and that I also remember well when she and Barbara Boxer broke through the glass ceiling with quite a vengeance when we ended up with not one, but two United States senators who happened to be female, uh, two Jewish women, and two from Northern California, so that that was quite remarkable. And she made her mark in the Senate for many, many years when she was at full strength. Uh, you think of the assault weapons ban that she was behind more than anybody else. I mean, she saved who knows how many lives in that period, I mean, you think now, but what happened is that assault weapons ban expired and she wasn't able to get it reinstituted. And we've seen the aftermath of that. Uh, but in the years that the assault weapons ban was in place, uh, again, it's uncounted numbers of people who she saved. Uh, her work on the Senate Judiciary Committee, her work for same-sex equality, one thing after another, just a remarkable, remarkable career. Yeah, Professor Levine, we know she she suffered uh, health problems for a long, long time. So everyone's been bracing for the, this moment, as horrible as it is. What do you think is happening behind political doors right now? And now that this word is coming out now that Senator Dianne Feinstein has died. Right. Well, uh, I mean, obviously, with, with somebody of her age and uh, obviously of declining health over many, many months. And so one issue, of course, was whether she should have run for office a couple years ago, and certainly in the past months, whether she should have uh, continued to attempt to serve, despite uh, it was obvious that her mental and physical capacity had diminished greatly, greatly. Uh, so you've got, gosh, the, the politics are just so complex at this point. All right, let's start uh, in Sacramento. All right, Gavin Newsom, our governor, has a rather delicate problem, which is deciding who should be appointed as the interim senator. Uh, because if he picks somebody who is interested in staying in the position permanently, then he's giving a huge leg up to somebody. All right, so that's one consideration. Another consideration is that he has already pr previously promised that he would appoint an African-American woman to this position because when Kamala Harris became vice president and um, Governor Newsom did not appoint a black woman, he took, he appointed um, Mr. Becerra instead, uh, he took some heat. And so he made that promise. All right, so why does that complicate it? Because we currently have three people 
running on the Democratic side for her spot, for Senator Feinstein's spot, because she had already said she was not going to try to run in 2024. So you have three excellent candidates in Katie Porter, Adam Schiff, and Barbara Lee. All have served California very, very well. Barbara Lee is the uh, senator, of course, from, I, th I think, KTVU is in her district, uh, as well as she's my representative. She's served us very, very well for many years, but she's one of the candidates. She, in a way, would be the natural African-American woman to pick, but she is running for that seat. And so that it might seem unfair if Governor Newsom were to pick her. But if he doesn't pick her, then who does he pick? And is that going to uh, cause some sort of a bad reaction because he doesn't pick the most natural person. So where does he go? Shirley Weber, the Secretary of State uh, in California, maybe. Uh, Karen Bass, the mayor of Los Angeles, uh, who was a representative for quite some time, but is just digging in to being the mayor of Los Angeles and has indicated she doesn't want the spot um, in the Senate, but who knows. Uh, so who does he pick? Does he try to pick a caretaker? Does he try to pick somebody who would be able to step up and again give that un, perhaps percep, perceived and <clears throat> excuse me unfair advantage. <clears throat> so that's one step. All right, now let's jump to Washington, if I may. You know, stop me if you need to, but uh, let's go to Washington. Now the Senate is very deeply divided. There is a slight uh, Democratic majority, but the key thing is that Senator Feinstein has been on the Judiciary Committee, and the Democrats mm -hmm. have controlled that committee, uh, and just President Biden has been, one of the things he's been able to do is he has pushed through a lot of judges. Now, judges, uh, as you know, are appointed by the president, the federal judges are appointed by the president and confirmed by the Senate, and they don't have to go to the House of Representatives. And we know what chaos there is in the Republican-controlled uh, House of Representatives right now. So Senator uh, Schumer, as the majority leader and President Biden have very efficiently been able to move a lot of federal judges. Uh, and the reason for that is the Judiciary Committee uh, is controlled by the Democrats. They're able to push the judges through there, and then they've been able to control the votes in on the floor of the Senate. Well, when Senator Feinstein was so ill and she was home in San Francisco for so many months, and a question came up of maybe somebody could take her place in the Judiciary Committee, Senator McConnell, the leader of the Republicans, made it clear that he wasn't going to cooperate with that. And without a person in Senator Feinstein's seat, then the Judiciary Committee wouldn't function in the same way. And as a and so that I think that was one of the reasons that Senator Feinstein hung on, and I think that there was less pressure on her among Democrats to uh, resign because of that. But if Senator Schumer, the majority leader, is not able to put a Democrat on the Judiciary Committee, as a practical matter, the process of getting federal judges through will slow down dram dramatically, if not freeze entirely. And that's been a big part of President Biden's legacy. So we've got issues that are immediately coming up in the Senate and in the White House, as well as Sacramento. So take your pick. Back to you. <laughs> That's a it's a lot. I mean, California has such a big impact. And you mentioned mm. women in particular, Diane Feinstein, Barbara Boxer, Kamala Harris, Nancy Pelosi. Um, right. it, it seems like so two two quick questions. Do you think any other women will step up? And then also just to clarify what you were just pointing to, does the person who serves in the interim um, in, da, in Senator Feinstein's seat automatically go into onto the Judiciary Committee? Uh, okay, so in terms of other women stepping up, I mean, I'm not sure whether you mean in Washington or or in uh, or in California politics, and specifically with this seat. Uh, so, so maybe we can go back to that. But that's um, the the question is whether Senator McConnell basically will effectively allow somebody to be added to the Judiciary Committee. Uh, in some collegial way, which would require basically uh, unanimous consent. I don't think Senator Schumer has the votes to force somebody on the Judiciary Committee. So that's why that's such an issue. It wouldn't be as simple as uh, putting, just picking somebody. For Senator Schumer, uh, 
to pick, you know, who know who knows some other senator uh, to take that spot. There's a there's something, you know, Senator McConnell was very good at pushing his leverage when it comes up. Think of what he did to hold off on getting a new Supreme Court justice when Justice Scalia died. So I assume we're going to see something of the same from him. So that's one step. Will somebody else say, uh, oh, I'll be the interim person? Um, I, I, I don't know who that might be. That's why I was naming the people who, uh, to me, come to mind. Maybe there's somebody else out there. But if Governor Newsom is going to keep the promise of an African-American woman, then what does he do about basically his Barbara Lee problem? Uh, because he would be putting the thumb on the scale among these three candidates because that person would have a tremendous leg up as the incumbent as we get to a primary and ultimately November 2024. All right, UC Law Professor David Levine, thank you so much for joining us this morning. There is a, so much yeah. involved in California and the, the role of senator. It plays a very pivotal role in, in D.C. So thank you so much for that. An ongoing story will continue to follow throughout the morning. Absolutely.